the new Red Green Show. And now here's a man who knows no fear. And you can tell that by the way he docks his boat. My uncle, your host, Red Green. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, you have a little trouble with the phone lines up the lines this week. Excuse me a minute. Stop using the phone. <laughs> Excellent phone manners. <laughs> it all started when Harold hooked up his combination fax, modem, and waffle toaster. Ended up welding everybody's phone lines together so we all get every call. Oh, that's gonna be my computer friends. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wrong number. I was clever. <laughs> what are we gonna do now? Well, Harold, the phone system won't be fixed by the phone company because all they keep carping about is unpaid bills as if that's gonna make any difference now. <laughs> so we're switching to a better system. Harold, we're gonna abandon the phones. We're going back to CB. Downwind danger, come in, downwind danger. Downwind danger? Stinky Peterson. <laughs> Show, I'm going to show you how to make your very own payphone booth. Buzz is going to bring us a barrage of opinion without any particular point. I'm going to try to get Mike to finally accept responsibility. And Garth Harbrell's going to try and bag a few geese. Hmm. Yeah, okay, Junior. Uh, no, it's not raining here either. Junior, you're not that far away, for heaven's sake. I can see you right out the window. No, I'm not gonna wave, I gotta go. Oh, for gosh sake. <laughs> Over and out. How's the communication network working out? Not bad. Well, you always get guys that kind of abuse the system, you know? You see, with most men, they don't want someone to talk to, they want someone to listen to them. <laughs> the single guys are the worst, I guess. If you can't get it at home, I guess, is how that one goes. <laughs> you know what? You know what you should do? You know what you should do? You know what you should do? Instead of just having the phone lines repaired, you should have them, like, upgraded, you know? Get call display, and then you can see the number of the person phoning that you don't want to talk to. Unless, of course, they got, like, that display block thing, you know? Because then what you got to do is you got to get interactive on them, and you have them forwarded to your voicemail. <laughs> Harold, you seem to have me confused with a suggestion box. <laughs> well, what I've done is I've divided every day up into hours, and each guy gets an hour to do all his communicating. See, I got 9 to 10 p.m. on Thursday. Oh, that's great. Well, am I on there? What hours do I get? Am I on there? Yeah, you have 3 to 4 a.m. Tuesday morning. <laughs> oh, darn. It's the same time slot as this show. <laughs> now, Bill's radio show is going to feature bowling. You want to stay tuned a little bit later in the show for that? He's just practicing right now. It's 10 pin, isn't it, Bill? Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's 2 pin. That is not the peace sign. <laughs> Okey doke, this is the big one. And for the grand prize of a free application of herbicide and pesticide from Moira's House of Skin Care, Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to make Mr. Hammer say this word. 30 seconds, begin. All right, uh, obligation. Parole. Uh, no, your job. Mandatory supervision. No, no. Um, when something goes wrong, it's your... Reason to leave town and start a new life? Uh, your behavior is your... Downfall. Start, 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 start a, new, a new approach here. Um, your wife and your child are... In Alberta. <laughs> I think. No, no, no. <laughs> Atlanta. But Mike, no, but Mike, Georgia. But Mike, but Mike, but Mike. <laughs> Legally, they are your... Monthly installment. <laughs> are you concentrating here, Mike? I'm giving it all I got, Mr. Green. Really? Yeah. Wow. Holy smoke. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's say you're the leader, then you have... Guns, guard dogs, <laughs> pepper spray... We're almost out of time here, Uncle Red. Right. Come on, Mike, Mike, Mike. Okay, Mike, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If something goes wrong and you're to blame, you have... Culpability. And if it's not the first time it happened, you have... Convictability. So the thing you want to avoid at all costs is... Responsibility. Uh, 
Oh, get your rods out, boys, and let your sinkers fly. Set your hooks and lures, but be sure not to catch them in any part of your eye. And I know we've had our fun with cards and jokes and beer, but if I don't go home with at least one fish, my wife won't let me come back next year. <laughs> That's true. Well, I'm sure our CB radio thing is going to work out, you know, all right. But just in case it doesn't, and we have to go back to the regular phone system, I thought I'd take this week's Handyman Corner, show you how you can make your phone profitable. That's right. I'm going to show you how you can make your very own pay phone booth. Now, I would suggest you just start off with the one pay phone booth, and then, you know, as you're successful, you kind of expand, maybe get a whole chain of them, eventually have Candace Berg and do your TV ads for you. <laughs> now, the main thing you need is some sort of a coin-operated door, like uh, this one on this old uh, newspaper box here. Uh, I suppose you could use the door off, to say, a pay toilet or a bank vault, but this unit is just a lot easier to throw into the back of the van when nobody's looking. <laughs> all right, the first thing you gotta do is get all the bolts off the bottom of there. There we go, and uh, she should just pop right off there, I would think. Oh, for gosh sakes. <laughs> I hope this project's worth the cash investment. <laughs> Now, you want to pick a building that's the right size and personality for a phone booth. The barn is too big. The shed isn't lockable. This is perfect. <laughs> All right, first thing you got to do is uh, get the door off the outhouse there. <laughs> you think how fast things rust around an outhouse, isn't it? Well, I'm sure there's a scientific theory for that, but we all know the real reason. <laughs> all right, now, the first thing you got to do is to attach your uh, coin-operated door to the outhouse here. You can bolt it on or you could wire her on there, but I prefer to use something that won't rust. <laughs> and that secret weapon, duct tape. All right, now I got the phone mounted on the wall in there. All I have to do is add in the Possum Lake phone book and, of course, the yellow pages. All right, yellow page. <laughs> and once the phone system gets going again, I'll be raking in the coin. And the beauty, of course, of uh, using an outhouse as my phone booth is, is kind of a dual purpose thing here. You know, you can answer two calls at once. <laughs> got an extra business line here. <laughs> and even the newspaper has more than one application. <laughs> Plus, if you got one of them teenagers who ties up the phone for hours on end, by having the phone in the outhouse with the aroma going and so on, I think you're going to pretty well nip that in the bud. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh, for gosh, thanks. Harold, you got a quarter there? Harold? <laughs> Harold? Come on, Harold. It's an emergency call. <laughs> Stay tuned. You won't want to miss Ranger Gord's infomercial. I want to talk to all you guys about an evening at home that we've all gone through. You've had a fairly quiet day at work. You've had dinner, watched a bit of television, and now you can hardly keep your eyes open. You think about sleeping on the couch, which is usually your wife's suggestion. <laughs> but then you figure, no, no, I got enough energy to go up to bed. I just won't put on all my pajamas. <laughs> all right, there's only one problem with this plan. It's only 8.30. 8.30, and you can hardly stay awake. That is pathetic. Okay, if you have any hope of staying up after 9 o'clock, you're going to have to start taking a nap in the afternoon. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I know this can be inconvenient unless you work for the government. <laughs> but you're going to have to find a way to do it. I know, you remember back in the old days, you'd stay up all night and just go straight into work, or you'd spend a whole weekend partying and you'd never lie down, at least not for sleeping. <laughs> well, the sleep that you need now is to make up for the rest you didn't get back then. <laughs> so relax and have a nap. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Oh, man, can't take any more of that. The Buster Hadfield Hour, 60 minutes of zither music. <laughs> You'd have to be an idiot to listen to that. What? 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 <laughs> After the first week of this system, the guys had pretty well said everything they could think of. A lot of them kept talking anyway. <laughs> Others switched to different kinds of music, and some of them even started getting guests on their shows. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got guests coming on my shows. I got uh, Kathy Lee Gifford, and I got um, um, G. Gordon Liddy coming up. The topic is hobbies. <laughs> you got them for sure, Harold? Well, no, no, not for sure. You know, but I, but I left an email message on the internet. I'm hoping someone will relay it on to them. I understand that Regis is wired. <laughs> 
So anyway, our phone system has turned into a radio station with the worst programs you ever heard in your life. Moose Thompson's show is What I Ate Today. <laughs> Stinky Peterson Up Close and Hazardous. <laughs> the Old Man Sedgwick Inspirational Hour. I heard that one. I heard that one. Does he speak Latin or did he just have his teeth out? <laughs> I don't mind a little friendly competition, but these guys are taking it so seriously. Well, there's one way to fix that, Uncle Rad. You can have the phone systems repaired, and then you can just cancel all the shows. <laughs> oh, no, no. Not all the shows, Harold. I, I don't know if you have a sense of the ratings, but I happen to own Thursday night. <laughs> Red's Easy Listening Harmonica House. to talk, but it is 50 cents. <clears throat> what the heck you got going on here? Well, with all the budget cuts of the forestry department, I thought I would help them bridge the financial crunch. I mean, money is apparently so tight they haven't sent me a paycheck in over a decade. Now, that's a huge funding gap. Now, that'd be a communication gap. <laughs> so tell me, what do I get uh, for 50 cents here, anyway? Well, uh, general information, mostly, but also uh, fire danger reports, weather reports, and a beautiful, breathtaking view from high atop Fire Watch Tower 13. All right, I'll bite. You got 50 cents there, Harold? Come on. There you go. Great. <clears throat> and 50 cents for Harold. Come on, Harold. I got it. I'm gonna. Sorry, Harold, you can't use the stairs. Just go up the outside. You'll be fine. <laughs> so, right. Wow. This is great. You're my first customer today, Red. Uh, guard, I'm your only customer ever. Oh, I don't know. I, I could probably get quite a few tourists around here. I mean, people love to climb high towers. Uh, look at the Washington Monument, the Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty. Yeah, or the CN Tower there in Toronto. There's a tower in Toronto now? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Next thing you know, they'll have a baseball team. Well, they did for a while. <laughs> Harold, finally, welcome. Thanks for dropping in, Harold. What now, Ranger Guard? Oh, well, first the uh, fire safety report. Low. Next, the weather report. It's fine, great. Souvenir shop is open. <laughs> Ranger Gord doll? Oh, boy. What's that? That's my tower. Holy smoke. No, not for me, thanks, Gord. Oh, well, then I'd like to give a short talk on the history of Firewatch Tower 13. Oh, man, no, 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 no. I've already had my 50 cents worth. Thank you, Gord. Oh, okay. Great. It's the easiest money I ever made. It's the only money I ever made. Attention, handyman. If you've got a piece of metal that's too long, you can shorten it with 10 snips. <laughs> Remember, any tool can be the right tool. <laughs> what is it with people? This CB thing was supposed to be just a fun way to communicate, and then somebody figures out a way to make money out of it, and everybody starts taking it way too seriously. No matter what it is in life, as soon as there's money involved, it's not fun anymore. It's easy for you to say. You're married. <laughs> I don't know what that is, Harold, but make sure I'm out of the building before you plug it in. It's a signal power booster for my CB. I'm making it out of my old clothes and play. It's really going to increase the reach of Harold's hip hop sock hop. <laughs> That's going to make my sponsor happy. Sponsor? You got a sponsor? What? Acne cream? <laughs> no, 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 no. Stodgy's pickles. The old fashioned experience pickle, the pickle that keeps on giving. Well, I'm sure. You see what I mean? Everybody's taking it so seriously, getting guests, getting sponsors, and the guests want bus fare and donuts, and the cost goes up, and then they got to get a bigger audience. And so they're starting to weld ladders together, so they got a bigger antenna, and they're starting to put clotheslines with stove wires on them, make a big thing, and beam it out, and it's getting to be a real pain. Have you seen Jimmy Gristle's show? It's called Shock Radio. <laughs> and it's shocking, too. <laughs> it's the grossest thing I've ever heard. Worse than the names that kids call me on the school bus. True. Well, you've been eating too many of your own pickles, I think. And not just any pickles. Oh, man. Stop Stodgy's pickles. Pickles grown in the shade for a greener green and a more natural flavor. Now there's a slogan. Stodgy's pickles for people who want a pickle where the sun don't shine. Hi, Ranger Gord here. 
You know, the mail service up here is not great because in the 16 years I've been up here, I haven't received one paycheck. And mom, I guess none of your letters have gotten through. So Red here has kindly allowed me to use this airtime to send you a personal message. Thank you very much. Mom, since I left, it's always been on my mind, but I, I never asked. Did I leave the kettle on? <laughs> Well, as I tried to warn you a little bit earlier in the show, Bill had decided to dedicate his radio program to bowling. Not really the ideal game I wouldn't think to play on the radio, but then again, I'm not Bill, and I'm very, very thankful for that. <laughs> yeah, there he is. He's broadcasting live from the back of Possum Lodge. Well, as live as he gets, which actually is way too live, and I made a few comments, character assassination, that type of thing. <laughs> What are you gonna do, Bill? Oh, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna set up the pins and what have you, and we're gonna have a little bowling game here, and I had his radio for him. And various weights of the balls. This is a, there's a very light one. I don't know. Anyway, uh, you got some five pin balls mixed in with those, Bill. All right, that's a 10 pin ball. Why don't you put that down? Oh boy, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. You know, you wanna sit down on the seats where you bowl. You wanna stay well back from a bowler. He threw that straight up, Bill. Don't worry, he'll be back in a minute. Oh, my gosh. oh, boy, that can't be good for anything. There we go. All right, well, we broke his radio, so we're making progress. I'll get that, Bill. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Sitting out in the sun, you know, the black balls really absorb the heat. You be careful there, Bill. The balls actually kind of change, almost changed their form. That was kind of, got kind of spongy on us there. And... Oh, my gosh. We clean up, John. Oh, just, just wipe, wipe that out. Never mind. All right. Now, there's a, we uh, created some shade with a lawn chair I had brought in the back of the van, and then uh, Bill grabs a 10-pin ball, and the thing with bowling, I don't know why some people feel they have to cheat. What about the foul? Bill, the foul? We got, no, we haven't got a foul line. We need a foul line. You can't go past it. You're going, that's cheating. You can't, you, can, you gotta put something. There's a, grab a pitchfork, grab a pitchfork, get a pitchfork. Lay that across, now you just don't go by that. Well, Bill thought, well, that's way too dangerous. Oh. <laughs> so he thought what he would do is uh, maybe take the dangerous part off the pitchfork, which is, I believe that's called the times. So he was, you know, if you had some line dance music going right now, you'd, you'd swear you were watching TNM, wouldn't you? <laughs> anyway, he's trying to get the handle off there. And there she goes, no problem. Oh my gosh, here comes the handle. Oh, my golly. I can carry the flag in the parade now. All right, so there's our line. Uh, I don't know, I think 10 pin is just a little too rigorous for me. Ah, oh, the pins are too far away. It's not my fault. Bill, lots of juice here. Lots of, let her go. Let her go. Oh, 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 oh. Head down the ravine. I guess, oh, oh. Stinky's car. Man, man. Tough to explain. Let's count our score. Bill, you got, let's see, two strikes. I got a spare. Stay tuned to see Harold listening to his Sony Dorkman. Animal control with another feature on the animals in your life. Come on in here, Red. Where'd you get the hand there, Garth? Mime school? <laughs> <laughs> no, Red. I was pulling rats out of a basement sewer trap, and uh, my watch band came off. Well, I guess rats really like shiny things, because, boy, I had to give one a heck of a bite to get it back. <laughs> boy, that sounds awful dangerous, Garth. Oh, no, just another super day on the job. You know, for all of you kids who may be going to college, here's a perfect example of what a fine arts degree can do for you. <laughs> An animal feature for us at all today, Garth? Huh? Animal feature? Oh! Oh! oh <laughs> uh, geese! Geese! Right. Vanity geese! Sure. Magnificent bird. Oh, yeah. Beautiful flyer. Mm -hmm. But boy, they got a large intestine like a sausage machine. <laughs> now, I got a whole pack of them out of Possum Park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's complaining about the geese down in the park there. Yep. Oh, yeah, about the about eating the grass and, and the droppings and whatnot. Well, not so much that. More that the meat is so tough and real greasy. You know, it's hard. It's sometimes hard to swallow. I'm going to forget I heard that right. All right, fine. Okay. Good. Good. Give me a hand with this. All right. So, uh... What are you going to do with the geese after you catch them? Well, I'm going to take them over to my boss's house. He and his wife were on vacation for a couple of weeks, and he ordered me to cut his grass. <laughs> well, that's such a good idea, Garth. They're filthy animals, you know. Oh, I, I know, Red, but so are the geese. <laughs> it's mail call. All right. I got, uh, I got the letter today, and... Uh... Oh, oh, oh. Got some pictures here, Harold. Here, you take the letter. Always love it when people uh, send us in uh, pictures of their uh, 
their camping trips or fishing trips or the handyman projects because it makes us feel better about the stuff we mess up on. <laughs> uh, well, already uh, apparently. Uh, no, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me guess. Not the greatest pictures. Looks like some kind of a wild animal. Could be a sea creature, I guess, of some kind. Yeah, dear Red, here's some pictures of my wife Marcia giving birth to our daughter. <laughs> here, animal control, reminding you that the best way to spot animals is by studying the tracks they leave. The worst way is by studying their bite marks. <laughs> <sighs> well, the Possum Lodge radio station is officially off the air as of midnight last night. What are you listening to, Harold? Nothing. I know. Possum Radio Network shut down. Oh, okay. <laughs> how long were you going to stand there listening to dead air, Harold? Depends. How long were you going to talk? <laughs> Not easy when you got him on one side and the government on the other. That's, that's what killed the radio station. I had built a huge transmitter. I, I duct taped bags of Christmas tinsel to a Douglas fir up on Rock Reef Point. Man, was I getting the signal out there. I was getting calls from Tibet, Timbuktu, and unfortunately, Ottawa. And it was the government, and they wanted to know if I had a broadcaster's license. I said, no, but I got a learner's permit. You know what? Maybe, maybe we should get a license, then we could have our very own radio station. Oh, no, Harold, no, no. I don't want the government in my life. I'm married and I work with you. I don't need anybody else telling me what to do. Okay, okay, forget that then. No, you know, radio is dead anyway. We should get our, a television station. No, Harold, I, I just want to have fun. I don't call television fun. You don't call this fun? I don't call this television. Oh, it's meeting time now. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be right down. Yeah, all right. And if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And now that I'm not in the radio business anymore, I'm no longer king of Thursday night. Maybe I can go back to being Prince of Saturday morning, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, for the rest of you, thanks so much for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here, Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Like that. 1986 or newer. <laughs> I 